Hi, welcome to this lecture of Two-Phase Flow. My name is Min Sang Li, and I am currently a faculty at the Department of Power Mechanical Engineering in National Tsinghua University. Per the request from the university, I am recording and sharing this series of lecturing about Two-Phase Flow for NTHU Open Courseware. The topic of this lecture is the liquid vapor interface and we are going to proceed on the basis of a microscopic point of view. For your reference, in lecture 1, we have treated the analysis of the interface with a nanoscale approach called molecular theories of capillarity. This figure shows a representative geometry of the interfacial region between two faces. The changes in the interfacial area for a shift of dy approximately equals s2 ds1 plus s1 ds2. The change in the volume of phase 1 is approximately s1 times s2 times dy. From thermodynamics, it can be shown that the pressure difference across the interface between these two phases equals the product of surface tension and DAI divided by DVI. With simple geometric relations, the equation in the red box can be derived. This is the famous Young-Laplace equation. It is widely used in analyzing the pressure difference across the interfaces between two fluids. Interfacial tension is very important in the determination of the shape of a liquid vapor interface at equilibrium. Consider an axisymmetric droplet on a flat solid surface. The radius of the droplet on the topmost point is RO. By using the Young-Laplace equation and hydrostatic analysis, an equation relates the local radii of the droplet as a function of surface tension, gravity, and the densities of the fluid can be derived as equation 34. From geometric considerations, the principal radius of curvature R1 in the vertical plane is given by equation 35, and the other radius on the orthogonal plane R2 is given by equation 40. Substituting these two relations into Young-Laplace equation and defining C and lambda, an differential equation of R as a function of Z can be obtained. Here the bound number denotes the relative magnitude of gravity versus surface tension. With appropriate boundary conditions that could be determined from the geometry, a solution of xi, lambda, and omega can be obtained at a specific bond number. A representative solution is shown in figure 2.5. Note that the solutions of xi and lambda are equivalent to the solutions of R and Z. The radii of the droplet at every Z location, in other words, the shape of the droplet, can then be determined. In a similar fashion, the rise of the meniscus of a liquid on a vertical plate can be estimated. The Young-Laplace equation is again the core principle. Z0 is the height of the liquid climbs at the vertical solid surface. Equation 52 describes the shape of the meniscus. It shall be noted that the heat transfer in the vicinity of the meniscus region is very effective in most cases. Combining the Young-Laplace equation with the hydrostatic pressure variation, the liquid rise in a small tube, or usually called capillary tube, can be derived. This is a well-known capillary phenomenon. The surface tension can be dependent on temperature. For example, the surface tension of pure water in contact with its vapor can be computed from this empirical relation. 
representative values are shown in this figure. For most liquids, surface tension decreases with temperature as can be described by relation 57. Equation 58 shows another developed relation for estimating the surface tension of nonpolar liquid. For fluid mixtures, the surface tension is also a function of the ratios of components. For example, for isopropanol water mixtures, equation 62 was developed to predict the mixture surface tension with small liquid mole fraction of isopropanol. For a water and ethylene glycol mixture, a volume fraction weighted average of the pure fluid surface tensions was proposed as equation 63. Figure 10 illustrates the possibly great impact of the concentration on the surface tension of liquid mixtures with different combinations. As previously noted, the surface tension at an interface varies with temperature. If the temperature varies on the interface, the interfacial tension will also be non-uniform, and a tension gradient would be resulted on the interface. The liquid at the locations with low surface tension will be pulled towards high surface tension regions. For example, if the surface tension decreases with the increasing temperature, the liquid near to the interface will be dragged from the high temperature regions, point A on this figure, towards low temperature regions, point B. The tumbling flow between the hot and cold spots, as shown here, is called as cellular flow. Referring to these two figures, the so-called Maragoni effect therefore increases the thickness of the liquid film at location B and it decreases the thickness of liquid film at location A. This effect might further increase the temperature differences between locations A and B. This in turn would lead to a more severe Maragoni effect on the interface. It is clear that this phenomena greatly affects the heat transfer across the liquid film and possibly even leads to dry out on those high temperature spots. Noted that a similar effect can also be observed when the concentrations of fluids in a mixture varies from place to place, since surface tension is also a function of local concentrations. For a thin liquid layer on a hot solid surface as shown on figure 13, the stability of the film can be analyzed by applying a standard linear stability analysis. Figure 14 shows a result of the linear stability analysis. The vertical axis is the Maragoni number as defined by equation 68. Sigma is the surface tension. Alpha TL is the thermal diffusivity of the fluid and the mu L is the viscosity of the liquid. Note that DTDZ is negative in this case, so the value for the Maragoni number is positive. For the horizontal axis, alpha is the wave number of the perturbation on the liquid vapor interface. Standard definitions for the bill number and the bound number are also specified. KL is the thermal conductivity of the liquid, and the rho is the densities of the fluids. CR is the crispation number. The curves in figure 14 are called neutral stability curves. Under a specific combination of bill number, crispation number, and bond number, the region above the neutral curve means the system is stable. The neutral curve shifts upwards with increasing the bill number. This means that this thin liquid film system tends to be more unstable if its thickness is decreased. Also, 
the position of the neutral curve is significantly dependent on the crispation number. The crispation number approaches zero for a thick liquid layer of high surface tension. From figure 14, it can be seen that the liquid thin film system is more easily get unstable with increasing the crispation number. For real systems, the bill number, bond number, and the crispation number are non-zero. From figure 14, the neutral curve is less sensitive to the changes of bill number and the bond number. However, for even just a very small crispation number, the system stability becomes very sensitive to disturbances with long wavelengths. Lastly, in general, it is expected that the system will become unstable if any of the disturbances wavelengths is unstable. So based on this figure, for small crispation numbers, the threshold value on the Marigoni number in this case is estimated to be about 80. The Marigoni effect can also be induced due to the concentration gradient in a liquid mixture. Figure 15 shows a falling film with a wavy liquid vapor interface of a binary mixture on a heated vertical solid surface. The evaporation rate of the more volatile component in the thinner region is higher than that in the thicker region. Therefore, the concentration of the volatile component in the thicker region is higher than that in the thinner region. If the more volatile component of the mixture has a higher surface tension, the liquid mixture tends to be dragged from the thinner region to the thicker region. This phenomenon promotes the breakup of the thin film. Since heat transfer from the heated surface is highly dependent on the thickness and the structure of the liquid film, the stability of the film is critically important to the heat transfer performance in this scenario. Here, let's summarize this lecture. We introduced the analysis to determine the shape and the curvature of a liquid vapor interface. The famous Young Laplace equation is derived from a surface free energy approach. We further talked about the stability analysis, which can be used to explain the formation and the growth of the wavy structures of the interface, which might be resulted from temperature or concentration gradients. These microscopic scale mechanisms and principles serve as important basis for the analysis of liquid vapor interfaces and the associated transport phenomena in our later discussions.